Hey guys, what's happening today? We are going to talk about frequency and wavelength. Pardon my arm, I'll get it out of there in a second. There you go. Frequency and wavelength. And before we start to really get into it, let's just go through really quick the parts of the wave so that we're you know what I'm talking about, okay? So this is a, a representation of a sine wave like you'd see on an oscilloscope. The y-axis represents the amplitude or the magnitude or the overall strength of the wave. The x-axis represents time. So if we say here this is, you know, zero seconds, and over here this is, I don't know, 0.3 seconds. Well, this wave has happened how many times in 0.3 seconds? And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. So the first thing we need to know when we say wavelength, what do we mean by wavelength? Well, let's talk about the parts of the wave. The parts above the zero line up here towards the top, this part of the wave right here, this is called the crest. And its opposite down here is called a trough. And one wavelength is from the top of one crest or one trough to the other. And it is represented as the Greek letter lambda. All right, are you with me? So, now we know the parts of the wave, and we can talk about frequency and wavelength. Because they're all very interconnected. All right, so frequency... And my definitions are my definitions. They're not the Webster's definitions. I take them from the Webster's definition, and I'm just trying to make it easier for folks who don't have a lot of experience to understand what we're talking about. So frequency is the number of times that a complete waveform, and that is crest to crest, is repeated in a fixed time and that was our time there remember from zero seconds to 0.3 seconds so what is a wavelength then that's the other side of the question right well wavelength is basically it's reciprocal it is the distance between two adjacent peaks, whether they be crests or troughs. And it is inversely proportional to the wavelength. Now there's one more thing we need to add into this so we can do just a couple of equations. Nothing, nothing too serious. We're not going to get any differential calculus. But we need to know C. And C, of course, is the speed of light. Why do we need to know the speed of light? Well, because electrons travel at the speed of light and they travel through wires and conductors at a somewhat diminished rate but still very close to the speed of light in our speed of light and I am gonna I want to I want to I want to make this easy for you to do the math kind of round this up let's do that let's just call it 300 million meters per second. All right? So those are our three components we need to talk about with frequency and wavelength. We talked about wavelength is uh, shown as lambda. Frequency is just displayed in, well, it's displayed in hertz. They can be megahertz kilohertz, hertz, um, gigahertz, but they are hertz. And a hertz, hertz, of course, is uh, repetitions per second. Wavelength is expressed as a matter of length. So we could have millimeters, meters, kilometers, you know, we can go all the way. 
We can have nanometers, picometers. Now we've got everything we need to be able to do just a little calculation. And the calculation is pretty simple. And it just says that lambda, you remember lambda, right? That's a wavelength. Lambda is equal to C, the speed of light, divided by F, the frequency. And really, that's all the math that we're going to get into here today. So, if you know your frequency, you just take the speed of light divided by the frequency, and you get lambda, which is your wavelength. Why is all this important? Well, it's just different ways to be able to identify and characterize this electromagnetic force in, in different manners. And this is especially true when you want to talk about groups of frequencies. You know, for instance, say you're operating on a VHF frequency of 145 megahertz. Well, that's one specific frequency. So yes, you can say I'm operating on 145 megahertz, and that's very specific. But if you don't need to be that specific, you can say I'm operating on two meters. Two meters is the wavelength. So we use, it, we use this a lot in amateur radio and in professional radio as well. Anytime you're dealing with uh, waves like this. So I'm going to show you the, the um, amateur radio ones because they're the ones that I am familiar with. All right. And I'm not going to draw you a horrible chart. I'm simply going to whip out this little thing from the ARRL, the American Radio Relay League. So remember I told you wavelengths can be any length at all. So here is 2,200 meters. Wow. That's a long wave. That is the distance from one, one crest to the second crest. And that covers the frequencies of 135 kilohertz to 137.8 kilohertz. Now we get down to 630 meters. And if you don't speak metric, 630 meters is about 2,000 feet, or 167 yards. So that is an American football field and a half for that wave to start, reach its crest, reach its trough, and then reach the next crest. Well, I'm sorry, I, miss, I misspoke. From the time it reaches its crest to its trough to its next crest. That is super long. Then we go up to 160 meters, which equates to about 1.8 megahertz. That's um, a very low band that a lot of amateurs use. This one is really good for long distance, late night communications. Then we have 80 meters, which is around 3.5 to, you know, 4 megahertz. 60 meters, and it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up to 6 meters. There's 2 meters that we talked about. 125, 70 centimeters. This is, uh, this is UHF. 70 centimeters. That's, you know, that's not very long at all. Then we can get up here into the microwave and all these other frequencies. So, it's just easier, instead of saying that you're going to be working on something between 14.175 megahertz and 14.350 megahertz to say you're working in the 20 meter band. People will, will understand what you mean. You know, it's, it's pretty simple that way. All right, now we're not going to get too far in the weeds. But, you know, just to close this out, a, a few advanced points. In the case of traveling waves, which means radiated energy, radio waves, I mean, you know, it could be anything. The frequency of, wave, of the wave is correlated to the wavelength of the wave and the speed at which the wave is traveling. So if the wave is move, moving faster, the number of complete cycles in one second is more than when it's moving slower. So it's very important in determining its frequency. And an important note to side this is two different waves can have different wavelengths on the same frequency. So if you assume that wave one has a wavelength of one centimeter and wave two has a wavelength of two centimeters, well, they can have the same frequency, but one will be traveling twice as fast as the other. 
Yeah, I, I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you guys. The relationship between frequency and wavelength. So, I mean, why is it important? I mean, if you're going to be messing around in electrical engineering, that's just things that you need to talk about. But in a practical sense, it becomes important, especially when designing antennas. You know, for instance, an antenna to work on the 40 meter band, the 7 megahertz band, from, let's say, 7 megahertz to 7.3 megahertz, is going to have to be in the area of 66 feet long for a half wave antenna. 66 feet. That's a big antenna. However, at the other end of the spectrum, uh, the UHF that we just talked about, I'm unscrewing an antenna over here if you wonder what I'm doing. But the UHF spectrum, here is a UHF dipole cut for 435 megahertz. It is a little over uh, 40, mil 40? Yeah, I forget. Let's see. One second. 33 centimeters long. So, half the wavelength. Sorry, it's too early for math. It's only quarter to two in the afternoon. All right, guys, that's about all I got to say about that for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Guys, the patrons are the only thing that are keeping this channel going right now. Um, if you're not a patron, please consider joining this uh this is April 2024, and this is uh, the first month since I've had this channel in 2018. I haven't been able to pay my utilities out of the revenue of this channel. So I'm not going to be able to keep this up much longer if, if it continues this way. All right, that's all I got. Peace.